Hello, well, that's you in today's first video. We're going to have a look at small analogues for today's uh, first video. It's the 7th summer 2018 analogues update. So we're going to pick up where we left off uh, last week, which was uh, looking at ENSO. Last week we looked at uh, summers that were transitioning from uh, La Nina to ENSO neutral. We're going to have a little bit more on that uh, as well for to the start of uh, the seventh update. And then we'll have a look at a few other scenarios that could occur in terms of ENSO through the summer. So these are less of a probability, but they can't be uh, discounted. So I'll talk you through everything that we're going to look at as we go along, and I'll try and unfold uh, the storyline for you as we go along. Uh, just say it's going to be quite a long video, so you can't watch it all in one go. You will be able to come back whenever you want uh, from uh, this evening and find this uh, video on the Summer Updates page. There'll be a written report that goes with it as well, so you'll be able to watch the video whenever you want and read that written uh, summary. Uh, just going over everything that we discuss in the video. I'll try and get that on the Summer Updates page you around 7, 8. Eight o'clock uh, this evening. The Gazworthy Sunday Roundup will be coming up later on today, so uh, look out for that. It'll be sometime after lunch. Quite a busy day coming up here at uh, the website. We are scheduled to do our next update for the Bank Holiday Weekend, the May Day Bank Holiday Weekend uh, today, but I'm also wavering about whether I'm going to need to do snow wash. I'll have more about that when I do the Gazworthy uh, Sunday Roundup. It's kind of on a knife edge, whether I think it's worth doing a fire final uh, snow watch for uh, for Monday uh, tomorrow. Um, so you'll hear more about whether that's going to be happening uh, later on in the guise of his Sunday roundup. And if it does, then we may have to postpone the May Day Bank Holiday uh, update. I probably might be able to get all of the updates in uh, if I have to do a snow watch. It just depends what the model output is showing. Uh, this morning and of course I'm doing this recording actually on Saturday night so I don't know what mods you'll be showing in the morning whether it'll be worth doing a final snow watch or not so you'll hear more about that in regards to this study round anyway uh, right I think that's pretty much everything covered uh, so it can be quite a long video watch if you can't uh, watch it when you won't go uh, you can come back and watch it when you want get yourself a comfy chair and a cup of tea and some biscuits going to be here for a little while uh, and hope you find it interesting and and informative thanks for tuning in on your Sunday. So just again to explain uh, what uh, Ento and La Nina is. So um, this blue area here in the Ecto Pacific Ocean on the 1st of January 2018 is the signature of La Nina. This is the cold uh, version of the ENSO phenomena. So this is cold sea surface temperature anomalies across the Ecuador Pacific from Peru, which is over here, to Indonesia, which is over uh, there. Uh, and when you get those cold sea surface temperature anomalies rising up, that's called La Nina. We have had a La Nina event uh, over the past few months to reach its peak around this point, actually, around the turn of the year, or maybe just before back in Christmas. It was a weak La Nina, but it was uh, a defined and a definitive uh, La Nina event that we experienced uh, this year. Um, we're now beginning to move out of that uh, La Nina event and uh, potentially going through to uh, ENSO neutral. So uh, last uh, week we looked at uh, summers that had La Niñas before them, but were ENSO neutral summers. So the La Niña unraveled through the spring, presumably, of these summers. I and mean, then by the time we get to the summer, we went into ENSO uh, neutral. I won't go into those summers again, but the signature was quite stark. This was the uh, all years combined chart. It looked like it was favouring uh, quite a lot of blocking, quite a lot of high pressure to be sitting to our north with low pressure underneath it down there and the jet stream and the flow are uh, on something of a southerly track. And then we tried to uh, sort of uh, take some of the years out and just looked at weak uh, La Nina to Enso Neutral because we have had uh, uh, one of the weaker La Niñas that uh, we've recorded, certainly back to 1950 for the winter of 2017-18. It was a weak La Nina. So we took some of the years out, some of those years that were actually moderate and strong La Nina events. We discarded those and we looked at weak Nina to Enso Neutral summer. So the situation was very 
very similar, really. Many of these summers that had La Nina's proscenium and went back to Enzo Neutral, they uh, generally, that's wrong, they generally favoured a uh, high-pressure blocking signal up to the north with blow average heights to the south. Um, there was an idea within there that uh, June possibly was favouring uh, being a rather drier and warmer month and then the deterioration through July and through August as well. Uh, and just to take a few more years out of this, just for the start of this video. So now we're going to look at uh, Nino to neutral uh, summers and summer months. Just from 1900 onwards. So taking out all of those years in the Victorian era in the 1800s. Uh, so all of these summers are from 1900 onwards. La Nina to Enso neutral. This is June, how June of these summers looks with an area of above average heights again centering towards the UK and towards Scandinavia with below average heights in the Atlantic and so we're doing something like that with flow with projection. So June looks like it has a greater chance, not a guarantee, but a greater chance in these summers from 1900 onwards of having uh, high pressure close to them. But again, we get the same idea as we go through to July. We find that the pattern's deteriorating with heights rising to the north and northwest around Green, below average heights uh, going underneath it. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, for jet stream on a southerly track. And so that's turning more unsettled uh, and potentially quite a lot wetter as well in these Julys uh, from 1900 onwards. And then that takes us through to August. Again, we see that uh, the August from 1900 onwards that are uh, landing you to Enso neutral. They're coming out unsettled with a trough of below average heights almost centred over the top of the country above average heights over Scandinavia and going back into the Arctic, so quite a blocking signal, and so therefore the jet stream um, mainly, not every year would be the same, but mainly a lot of these years will be sending that jet stream away to the south. So still the idea, even if we, even if we take out the uh, years in the Victorian era, the years in the 1800s, even if we take those out, we just look from 1900 onwards, we still have that same idea that June is potentially, with these uh, landing year to end so new summers, June is potentially the best month in terms of having a stronger anticyclonic signal, and then July and finally August uh, show a deterioration. Uh, the actual summers look like that uh, from 1900 onwards that are uh, landing into Enso neutral, and it makes no difference really if we take the uh, 1800s out of it. It doesn't make much difference. We come away for the summers uh, from 1900 onwards and again from landing to Enzo neutral with below average heights centred over the top of the country above average heights up to the northeast. The jet stream is down there and so they're unsettled summers albeit they possibly some of them at least start off uh, reasonably uh, warm and reasonably uh, dry signal for June. And if we narrow it down even further, so uh, all the time in narrowing this down from where we started off uh, last week, just looking at broad landing uh, to enter neutral summers, which encompass like the strongest landing years to the very weakest landing years, we've narrowed it down by strength, we've narrowed it down uh, by year. Now we're going to narrow, narrow it down by strength again. So these are weak La Nina to Enso neutral summers from 1900 onwards. So gradually we're firming up uh, on the years that we need to be discussing. And again, we find that uh, for June, below average heights are up there with a bit of a signal for above average heights to be uh, close to the country. But then July, look at this, it makes no difference really uh, how much we narrow it down. The signal is still coming out the same, which is for northern blocking to be to the north, to the west of the British Isles, below average heights centred over or to the south, the jet stream down there. And so July shows a quite clear deterioration in the pattern compared to June. And then this continues into August as well. Maybe not quite so bad for August, but still the same broad idea. The below average heights over to the south of the country, the blocking signal more centred towards Scandinavia. So maybe more of an easterly influence, which can be quite warm in the summer. But essentially, it's still the same broad uh, idea, no matter how much we try and narrowing this down, we're still coming out with the same signals. Overall, the summers are looking like that. Uh, remember, these are 
week, La Nina to Enzo Neutral Summers from 1900 onwards. So we've narrowed this down as much as we can, and we still come away with that idea of northern blocking uh, to our north and uh, below average heights over and to the south of the country, an unsettled uh, summer signal. So this is the latest in terms of the sea surface temperature anomalies uh, in the actual Pacific Ocean. This is from NOAA and it's from the 22nd of April. Doing a video, uh, recording video on the 28th of April. We'll be releasing it on the 29th of April. And we still have that uh, La Nina signature, albeit it's a lot weaker now compared to what it was uh, back at the turn of the year. The first uh, chart I showed you was from New Year's Day and obviously... Uh, much stronger landing in signature there. But we do still have these blue colours through the uh, equatorial Pacific Ocean. We think, and most of the modelling is agreeing on this, that we are moving from landing to Enzo Neutral. But it is possible that we could see this might be as weak as landing it gets, and actually it might start strengthening uh, through the summer. So that's something that can happen, landing uh, just carrying on all the way uh, through the year. So the next batch of analogues we need to look at. Remember, we're not favouring this. Don't think this is the most likely outcome, but we can't discount it. So the next batch of analogues are La Nina summers, and they're just La Nina all year, if you like. So they started off as La Ninas in the winters that preceded them, and then they've just carried on with that La Nina through the spring, probably at a, at a weaker level, and uh, continuing into the summer, maybe even strengthening through the summer into a second or possibly even a third landing year event for the following winter. I hope you're able to follow this. So essentially, I'll just uh, explain again that landing year uh, it nearly always starts in the summer. Same for El Nino. They start in the summer. They uh, reach their peak. They continue to strengthen through the autumn. They reach their peak sometime around Christmas or maybe a little bit after, so in the middle of winter. And then they'll weaken as we go through the late winter and into spring period. And normally they go back to Enso Neutral through the spring. And then in the following summer, then off you go again uh, with some other situation often just a continuation of ain't so neutral. Uh, but sometimes what can happen is that uh, the La Nina or the El Nino will uh, meet, reach its peak around Christmas, around the middle of the winter. It will weaken but still continue into the spring. And then as you get through to the summer, it will either stay at that weakened level or it might even strengthen again through the course of the summer. And that's true whether it's El Nino or La Nina. And if that happens, you can have a double or even a triple uh, La Nina or El Nino type event. So all of these summers that we we're going to look at now are uh, La Nina all the way through the summer. They start as La Nina at the beginning of the summer and they continue as La Nina right the way through. So the first year is 1874 uh, that does this. This is the La Nina summer of 1874. Uh, remember, this is following on from a La Nina from the winter before, if you like. Uh, and not much to go on uh, with that. It's a very weak looking scene. It looks like we've got some low pressure up to the north, but uh, otherwise, <coughs> excuse me again, otherwise not huge amount of So I don't think we'll dwell. On 1874, very long. 1890 is our next uh, La Nina summer that starts off as La Nina and carries on as La Nina all the way through. This one looks like a very, very bad summer indeed with a uh, shocking area of below average height centred over the top of the country. And there is a bit of blocking signal as well. That looks like a very unsettled summer. 1893 comes up next. This looks like a much better summer. We do have uh, the centre of the high pressure is towards Greenland. So it is a bit of a block. Uh, type summer, but the ridge, the ridge is extending down through the UK and much of Europe, which is keeping this trough pinged out into the Atlantic. That looks like it would be a very nice summer indeed. I don't know much about the summer of 1893, but it looks like it would have been a really, uh, really quite a nice summer and potentially some very warm weather on offer. 1894 next, and you see this is uh, very different. The above average heights, again, are centred to the north, but now we've got the below average heights underneath it. So unlike in 1893, where that ridge is extending down into Europe, this one has the below average heights underneath it. So therefore, that looks like it's probably quite a cool and unsettled summer. 
1909 uh, comes up next. So uh, I think this one's been appearing in our analogues uh, a little bit. Uh, the summer of 1909. This is a very bad summer. It has a blocking signal out to the north, to the northwest, with below average heights over and to the east of the country, pulling down very cool air indeed around that trough uh, as well. The jet stream is on a southerly track, so that looks like a really bad summer in 1909. At uh, 1910, uh, next, so uh, so that's interesting. So presumably there must have been a landing uh, from sort of 1908 to 1909, uh, and then we get another one, it continues through 1909, then we get another one in 1909, 1910, which carries on into the summer of 1910. And this one looks like a pretty bad summer as well, with a strong blocking signal up to the north of below, which heights of the jet stream being pushed down there, so that's a very bad summer. 1909 and then 1911 turns up so this is a really long La Nina uh, that presumably must have started in 1908 and it's still continuing into the summer of 1911 uh, quite interestingly so that's uh, like uh, 908, 909, 910 that's like four years of uh, continuous La Nina there maybe four to five years of continuous La Nina that's very very Unusual indeed. Anyway, I'm off on a tangent. Sorry about that. Uh, getting back to business. So the summer of 1911 is quite interesting because it looks like it will be quite a poor summer, doesn't it? We've got the blocking signal up there towards Greenland. Um, this sort of little area of high pressure just here across Central Europe does give the game away to some degree. Uh, with the low pressure down here, you can see what would have been happening. The jet stream would have been coming across the Atlantic like that. And then it would have been curving up around the blockings like that. So that's one of those very, very rare summers where blocking actually aids us. It helps us to uh, be the way it lines up with the trough in the Atlantic and the jet stream. It actually helps us to pull up hotter winds from the south. You can see how the jet stream is bending like that. And so the air would have been pushing up from the south. Actually, the summer of 1911 was a hot summer, particularly, of course, uh, a very hot July in 1911. Then we have a long gap through to 1950. So we have that sort of four, five year La Nina uh, going on from 1908 through to 1911. And then we have a long gap before we get sort of a double summer La Nina, if you like, in 1950. There would have been La Niñas in between, but they would have just been uh, a one year's, uh, one year La Nina uh, event, if you like. So um, this one is uh, the La Nina all summer of 1950. This is a very unsettled summer. Uh, we have above average heights to the north, below average heights underneath it, the jet streams down there. That's a pretty cool and pretty unsettled summer, to say the least, in 1950. But then we get a better summer coming along again. Look at this. So it's quite interesting now. Uh, we've got below average heights up to the north in 1955 with quite a strong blocking signal to be centred over and to the east of the country. And so that's a hot summer in 1955. Then we go through to 1956, and look at this, we're into one of the worst summers of the 20th century. Just everything that can go wrong does go wrong in the summer of 1956. The jet stream is down there. We've got this trough over to the east of the British Isles. Not really that much of a northern blocking signal, uh, but uh, nevertheless, despite the fact that it wasn't particularly bad in terms of dawn blocking, 1956 is one of the worst summers of the 20th century. So at the moment, you'll say probably no clear, uh, no clear sort of um, trend. Uh, we have had a couple of hot summers, very hot summers of 1955, 1950, uh, 1911. Uh, but also a couple of really bad summers, 1956, I suppose, 1909, you would add into that as well. Another fairly long gap through to 1971. This is the La Nina summer uh, of 1971. It looks like this with below average heights down to the south and southwest, above average heights up to the north and northwest and below average heights. So a very odd looking pattern. Uh, I assume quite a changeable summer 
1971. But I think there was some quite nice weather in, in there at times. 1974 comes up next. This is another really bad summer. Uh, so the jet stream's down there. Uh, it's an unsettled summer, a wet summer. Very cool as well. The last sort of notably wet season... Uh, is the summer of 1974 until the autumn of 1976. So after this, we go off into those very dry uh, seasons and years of 1975, 1976, until the drought finally breaks in the autumn of 1976. And 1975 comes up next. So obviously quite a long run of La Nina then uh, through the mid-70s. We must have had a, the first year of La Nina must have been in 73, 74. And then the second year must have been uh, 74, 75. And then the third year must have been uh, 75 through to 76. So uh, we find that the summer of 1975, again, it's a complete flip. This is another much better summer with above average heights almost centred over the top of the country. Uh, this is the first of the two very hot summers of the mid 70s. It had the snow in June, of course, 2nd of June 1975. Did see fairly widespread snow across the country, but actually the summer of 1975 was uh, a very hot summer. So at the moment, it appears we're trading bad and good uh, summers as we are going along. Then we go to 1985 and look at this. We're into another really poor summer again with uh, just a trough centered over top of the British. A little bit of a blocking signal up there, and the jet stream is down there. So, obviously, we have got more hot summers showing up within our analogues package for these summers. But, on the same side, we've got an equal number of really bad or even quite shocking uh, summers showing up. From 1985, we're going to get another pretty long gap through to 1999. This is how the summer of 1999 looks, with above average heights to the northwest and over there across eastern parts of Europe. Low pressure is up here. This is a funny summer in uh, 1999. It's a warm summer, does have a hot July, uh, but it also has a very unsettled August. I mean, it got really hot again uh, through the first half of September. Uh, 1999. So um, that's one of those 1990s summers that's a little bit forgotten because there were uh, a lot better summers for 1999 through the 1990s. Uh, but on its own terms, and if it happened now, we would regard 1999, I think, as uh, really quite a good summer. Then 2000. So again, obviously we get this another long run of La Nina that started uh, with the uh, period of 98, 99, uh, or I should say 97, 98 would have been uh, El Nino. Then we go through uh, to 98, 99, then 99, 2000, and then 2000, uh, 2001 was the end of that particular uh, La Nina period. So again, with this one, we find that we have quite a strong blocking signal to be up to the north with below average heights uh, down there. And uh, this one is a much more unsettled summer and uh, a rather cooler summer too. Although it was quite warm, the summer of uh, 2000, the millennium summer did have some pretty warm weather. But nevertheless, it, uh, it was a much more unsettled summer, particularly compared to 1999. Of course, it finished up with that phenomenally wet autumn in 2000. Uh, and they have 2008. So this one, uh, really unsettled summer with below average height centred almost over the top of the British Isles. Uh, a blocking signal up there as well. And the jet stream is down there. Very cool and unsettled summer in 2008. And then 2011 is our uh, last uh, La Nina all summer following on from a La Nina uh, the year before. So uh, this one finds that we have just a trough centred over top of British Isles, above average heights uh, with bit of blocking signal up to the north. The jet stream is down there. It looks like it's very unsettled summer. Actually, I don't remember 2011 as being that unsettled. The main thing about, about it was that it's just uh, really quite a cool summer. Often uh, cloudy days and uh, low and disappointing uh, temperatures. So if we combine all of those summers and have a look at the Junes for all of these uh, landing year all summer years, this is what uh, we come out with in the all years combined chart. And this looks more unsettled, interestingly, than anything that we've seen so far when we've been looking at these ENSO 
uh, analogues. We've got a more unsettled signal here for June with below average heights centred around the UK and Western Europe. And a bit of a blocking signal going on up to the north. So if La Nina was to continue, uh, was to continue and maybe strengthen into the summer, it would possibly favour a more unsettled June than if La Nina was to fade and go to Enso Neutral. Uh, the July's just look really quite bad indeed. But do bear in mind, we have got, it looked like we've got almost an equal number of very bad and very poor uh, summers. I don't think it was that equal. There were some very good summers in there, but I think they are in the minority. And so that's why we do come out with this blocking signal up to the northwest and the below average heights to the south and to the southeast. And then that continues into the August as well, with, again, the below average heights uh, around the UK and the blog signal up to the north. So it only really makes a, a difference if in June. Um, so if La Nina was to continue and to strengthen through these, uh, through into the summer, it will favour a more unsettled June. Uh, by way these analogues are coming out. Uh, but if it was, if La Nina phase to aim so neutral, which, which is kind of like what we're expecting, then uh, June is possibly the, the greatest chance, anyway, possibly has the greatest chance of being a drier and warmer month, but not uh, guaranteed. The all summers combined, all months for, all years combined chart uh, for these summers uh, looks like that. It does look pretty bad indeed with the below average heights again over the UK and the blocking signal up to the north. So overall, it doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference whether Enso phase back to Enso neutral or whether it continues as, uh, as La Nina through into the summer and possibly strengthens. Again, we have to keep in mind that we do have some really good summers in these analogs. We've got 1911, we've got 1955, we've got 1975 down there. So there are a number of decent summers, but they're outnumbered by the very poor summers. 1909, 1950, 1956, uh, 1974, and then if we carry on, uh, down here, so 1985, uh, 2008, and also 2011 uh, down there. So whilst there are some good summers, some hot summers are included within these analogs. They are uh, they are overwhelmed. If you like, their signal uh, is overwhelmed by the summers that are either just sort of average to summers to summers that are very poor. Again, let's take out the stronger and uh, moderate landings and just have a look at weak uh, landings. So these were weak landings uh, in the years in the year before, and they continue to be weak landings uh, through into the summers. So doing that, we narrow it down to 1974, 18, uh, 1874, I should say, 1890, 18, uh, 1894, 1985. So some some of the rather better summers are at this uh, range with these weak La Niñas. For June, uh, so we've got some ridging in the Atlantic and going on up there with below average heights down there. So still probably favouring uh, uh, rather unsettled conditions in the Jews. But Julys are interesting. Look at this. The anomaly... Uh, for these years that are just weak La Nina all year, following on from weak La Nina before, these aren't as bad uh, for July. Uh, so the blocking signal is much less to our north. There's not much northern blocking going on up there. Actually, there's a lot of low pressure there. We do have below average heights to our south, but we also have this ridge in the Atlantic that looks like it would probably be extending into the UK to some degree. So that is a better uh, July all years combined chart if we just look at the week uh, landing uh, uh, years. And then similar for August, although August is not quite as good as July, but it's not as bad, if you like, as some of the um, August all years combined chart that we have looked at through our analogues. We do have a, a blocking signal to the north. It is rather weaker. We've got the below average heights uh, around there. So overall, probably favouring quite cool and unsettled August. But as I say, there are some decent Augusts in there. So uh, 1975 is in there. Uh, 1911, 1955, they are decent months uh, in the August of those uh, years. But of course, we also have 1985, which isn't much good. We've got 19. 
09, which isn't uh, very good either. Uh, and then the all years combined, or I should say, uh, all summers combined uh, with these weak La Nina all year summers uh, look like that. Overall, so we favour Blairbridge Heights to be to the south, not as deep as we have for some of the ancient analogues that we've looked at. We've got above average heights favoured to be to our north, not as strong as we've had for some of our uh, ANSO analogues that we've looked at through uh, these packages. <coughs> Excuse me. Once again, a little bit of tickle in, a, in my throat uh, tonight. Um, hopefully I won't have to pause the video and go get a glass of water, but if I do, I'll uh, give you a warning before I do that. So um, uh, we find that, again, we do have uh, we do have quite an unsettled summer signal for these uh, weak landing year all summers. Summers, um, but uh, not quite as bad as some of those uh, years that uh, we've looked at. So we've got a table here just uh, sort of uh, talking us through everything that, that we've spoken about uh, so far, uh, finally. So this side of the table is the uh, La Nina to Enso Neutral Summer. So we mostly looked at these summers through the course of last week. And it just backs up what we was confirming, uh, what, what we've already said and confirms what we've already said. So these, these are the years just here. We've got 1870 starts off and go down to 2012. Uh, down here, and these are the months June, July, and August. You'll notice that in the June column, these uh, temperature anomalies are compared to the 81 to 2010 average, by the way. You'll notice that in the June column, we have quite a lot of red appearing, pink and red, and these are above average Junes in terms of uh, the 81 to 2010 average. So there's quite a few of them. There are a few colder Junes as well. There are a few uh, Junes that are coming out with these blue colours, but not too many of them. Many of them are closer to average or above average. But if we go over here to the August column, look how many of the Augusts in these uh, La Nina to Enso neutral summers are coming out either pale blue or darker blue. There is a, a real sort of absence of uh, red colours appearing here. So many of these Augusts are coming out cooler or even colder than average. We do have a couple of hotter Junes uh, just there. But overall, you can see there is far less red, so far less uh, months that are coming out above the 81-2010 average in the August column compared to uh, the June column. July is interesting because we have like a, a split in the July column. We do have several of these uh, Julys that are coming out uh, really quite cool for these uh, landing into Enso neutral summers. But we do also have uh, a fair few uh, warm months as well in July. So, and some of them are very warm indeed, very hot. Uh, so, uh, 1934, for example, 1976, 1989. And of course, our hottest July and our hottest month ever recorded is also included within these analogues. Uh, July 2006. So you get the idea that June is most favoured to be warmer than average, August is most favoured to be cooler than average, and then the Julys are uh, almost not quite a 50-50 split, but almost a 50-50 split between those that are favoured to be warmer than average or cooler than average. But if they are warmer than average, they could be substantially uh, warmer than average. And then we've got the constant landing. So these are the analogs we've just been looking at. There are far fewer of those, of course, because generally ENSO will go back will go back to ENSO neutral, will fade whether it's landing here or El Nino, will usually fade back to Enso Neutral through the spring and into the following summer. Uh, so there's fewer of these years in the continuous La Nina uh, column. But you'll notice for the June, again, the same idea, we've got the years just there, starting in 1874 and going down to 2011. For the June column, there's much more blue showing up uh, with these Junes. Uh, so June, if La Nina was to continue, I don't think it will. We're not expecting it to. We think it's going to go to Enso Neutral by the summer. But if La Nina was to continue through the summer, we would expect June probably to be quite cool and unsettled. So that's a fairly big change, actually. Uh, although it wasn't particularly evident in the 
all years combined analogue charts. Actually, when we look at the CETs, that's quite a big change um, between uh, La Nina to Enzo Neutral and continuous La Nina in terms of June. July also is uh, rather different. We do still have a few hot Julys uh, showing up. So, for example, we've got 1911, uh, 1935 and also uh, 1999 as well is showing up, and to some degree 1975 as well. Uh, but also I have got some very cool Julys uh, showing up. So June and July, possibly, if landing year continues into summer, June and July probably uh, favour being cooler, uh, actually. Although you can't rule out the chances of hot months. They're in the minority. It looks like June and July favour being cooler. But we come over to the August column, and then we've got quite a big split. And there are far more hotter uh, August in this uh, set of analogues, the continuous La Nina analogues, compared to what we have in the La Nina to Enso Neutral analogues. Remember, do always remember, the La Nina to Enso Neutral analogues are the ones we are favouring for this summer. But if, big, big if, if La Nina was to continue and possibly strengthen into this summer, but you can see there are several uh, really quite hot August showing up. So we've got 1911, we've got 1955, we've got 1975, all coming out with CETs uh, above 18 degrees Celsius, which is a very hot uh, CET. Uh, equally, there are some really quite cool August continuing as well. So there would be the risk that August could be very cool and very unsettled. But it does look as though the continuous landing years uh, now, continuous landing your summers do have a greater chance of having a uh, hotter August. And then there's just one final, uh, just one final uh, thing that we've got to look at that might happen, which is that we might go straight from La Nina to El Nino. And that's very unusual. That's very rare for that to happen. So there aren't, there's only two summers that we can come up with where that has happened. It, it is possible that we might go from uh, La Nina to Enso Neutral to El Nino by the autumn. Um, we may look at that when we come to do the autumn updates. There are a few more years where that's happened. But to go from La Nina in like the winter and the spring straight to El Nino in the summer, that is very unusual, very rare. But it is something that the ECMWF is currently showing uh, so this is the ENSO forecast from the ECMWF model, and it does want to take us into a week to borderline moderate El Nino event. That's where we're starting off at, down there, uh, with La Nina. And you see how the ensemble plume is just shooting up and going into this week to moderate El Nino through the course of uh, the summer months, which is uh, kind of like that period just there. So in that period, uh, we're around here, which is just going into... And El Nino summer. So that is something we've got to factor. It may happen. We're not expecting it to at all. But there are a couple of summers that did that. The first summer is 1925. So this is uh, La Nina to El, to El Nino with no sort of period of so neutral, particularly in between. Uh, this is how June of 1925 looks. It looks like it would have been a very nice June indeed with above average height centering over the UK and uh, below average heights over and to the east of the country. Uh, then we go through to July of 1925 and we come away with a much more unsettled looking month below average heights over and to the south and to the west of the country. Bit of a signal for high pressure to be over Scandinavia. And then we get to August, and it looks like a very poor August in 1925, with quite a strong blocking signal up here and below average heights down there, ending the summer on quite a poor note. The only other year we can find that uh, did this, so uh, let's see why that is it going no, There we go. We, the only other year that we can find, oh, I've got to show you the all years, uh, the uh, summer of uh, 1925, first of all, getting ahead of myself. So the summer of 1925 uh, looks like that, with above average heights to the north to the northwest below average heights to the south to the southeast probably quite an unsettled summer but we know that uh we did start off quite decent in june and then the only other year that we can find uh that goes straight from landing to el nino in the summer there will be more if we look at this for the autumn 
updates, by the way. But for the summers, the only other year we can find is 1951. This is how June of 1951 looks with below average heights to ourselves. A blocking signal up to the north. Looks like it's probably quite an unsettled, cool uh, June. Uh, July of 1951 looks quite strange with above average heights building through the country. Possibly quite a nice July. The jet stream looks like it's being pushed up to the north to some degree. So I would assume July 1951, well, it's probably not a classic summer month. Probably did have some quite nice weather. And then August of 1951 just looks really, really bad with this deep trough of below average heights centred over top of the country. The jet stream is going down there somewhere. Uh, that looks like a pretty horrendous August. So a very funny summer in uh, 1951. Putting it all together, that's how the summer of 1951 comes out uh, with uh, below average heights centred over top of the country, above average heights out there and over there. Bear in mind, there was possibly a much better uh, period through the course of July. Now, we're not expecting to go to El Nino through this summer, so I think that's very unlikely to come off. There's, there's only two years, so we can't draw anything useful from that in, in terms of the broader analogues. We just thought we'd throw it in at the end, because that's what um, the uh, ECMDF model is kind of hinting at. But um, we can't really draw anything useful, because there's only two summers where, that we can find where that's happened. So... If we was to do that, if we was to go into El Nino through the summer, then obviously uh, we'd be in uncharted territory to some degree, because we don't find two summers back to the 1850s where that's happened. Um, so let's deal with the La Nina side of things. We're, we're either, I think, going to go uh, from La Nina to Enso Neutral, and that's what I'm favouring to have them, or we possibly continue with La Nina all the way through uh, the summer. And we have seen that there are several differences uh, between those two scenarios. So the most favoured option is favouring the chance of a drier and warmer uh, month in June before a deterioration probably takes place through July and particularly into August. Whereas the La Nina's all summers, they favour cooler and more unsettled uh, June, but possibly a greater chance of warmer August. But as I've been saying, I don't think that's where we're going. I think we're going to go Enso to Enso Neutral. I think you're going to have an Enso Neutral summer. So that pretty much closes the door on all of the uh, Enso analogs. Next week we'll be off and running and looking at something else. But I think that pretty much covers everything from an Enso uh, sort of perspective. Got to say big thank you to James Ackrell because I don't think I did that at the start of the video. So uh, again, it's James who's brought all of this together. I sort of come up with the idea of what I want to, uh, what I want to explore, the avenues I want to explore. I mean, uh, we collaborate and James goes off, does his magic and comes up with all of these wonderful analogues and charts that I'm able to present to you. So as I always have to explain, if it wasn't, for James, I wouldn't be able to do it because I just, with Gazo, this and all the other updates I'm doing, I just don't have the time to trawl through all of these uh, analogues and all of this data and then get the analogues um, off the uh, website that James uses and then get them uploaded and so on and so forth. So I wouldn't be able to do these analogues without James. So as ever, big, big thank you to my analogues guru, James Acrium, for coming up with all of this. Uh, for us once again. And as I said, that pretty much closes the door now on the ENSO side of things. So, of course, we're going to bring all of this together uh, when we uh, release the Gazo this winter, uh, summer. What am I talking about? When I release the Gazo this summer uh, 2018 forecast on the 27th of May, uh, we'll bring all of this together. Uh, you'll be able to see in that forecast how many of the years are sort of uh, combining and which are the best years in terms of uh, creating an analogue for this summer 
And uh, that will all be explained when we do the summer forecast. But that's pretty much the end of the end side of things. I think next we're going to have to explore the QBO possibly. And I'm sure we'll have a look at the April, uh, this April's weather patterns as well. But at just gone 44 minutes, been an extended one. Uh, all remains is for me to say thanks so much for tuning in. Don't forget this video will be placed on the summer updates and forecast page later on today with a written summary going over everything that we've discussed in the video. Coming up after lunch, around or just after lunch, we'll have the uh, Gazweather's Sunny Roundup. So come back for that then. Uh, but that's all for now, and thanks for watching.